Hello and thanks for joining me today. This morning I've been teaching a class here at home and we've been looking at um, Van Gogh's sunflowers. So I thought I would carry on with that and tell you a little bit about what we've been doing this morning. Um, now usually when I teach I don't do a full demonstration of a full painting because I don't think it does you any good to copy other people's work in the full. I think it's good to give people ideas, show them techniques so that they can expand that and find their own style. Um, I do feel it sort of stifles creativity a bit to complete the whole thing um, because it, it is quite tempting just to copy. So I've been trying to get away from that and I, like I say I don't always finish what I'm doing but actually I quite enjoyed it this morning what we were doing and I thought I would carry on and finish it rather than just abandon it like I normally do and also to show you what I was doing. So two things we were looking at with Van Gogh and the sunflowers, um, the first was composition and the second was his colours. Now I've got this little book, um, Understanding Vincent, and it was quite a cheap book because I got it in a second hand shop and it was only a pound. So a real handy little book to have. And there's a chapter here on composition and it was saying about how sort of, it's a top heavy composition in a way, um, I'm hoping you can see this. It's sort of an upside down, uh, I don't know what you would call the shape really, it's not a square but it all fits into this asymmetric shape here and if you look at um, the way it's proportioned there's a very small piece of table at the bottom and the vase is very small compared to the rest of it. It's what I would call very top heavy and again if we look at the one on the next page all the details at the top and all the foreground here is um, you know quite simple really compared to all the detail up here. So he used very simple compositions but he did spend some time thinking about those and did a lot of underpainting as well. So he did his in oil of course, I'm not going to work in oil, I've been working in watercolour and the colours in the actual, um, oops I've got a swivelly chair and I keep moving around, the colours in the sunflowers are actually quite subdued for sunflowers, they're not perhaps as bright as you would have imagined them to be. Um, so again that's another thing to look at but also I use lots of contrasts of colours so if you think about what's on the opposite side of the colour wheel um, that can really make your painting come to life if you put those colours next to each other so sometimes it did that more subtly and sometimes it did that quite dramatically so here quite subtly we've got a, a purpley mauve blue line as a contrast to the oranges and yellows in there Okay, so those were the two things we looked at, but we didn't want to just do an artist copy, we didn't, we didn't copy this at all. We got several pictures of sunflowers, um, printed them off, and some of these were from Pixabay. And also I have things like this which I use when I'm working, which are quite handy. This is a book um, from the florists, which gives you a list of all the flowers available to the florist. And of course we've got some flowers here that we can, can work from. Um, and I've got gardening books and things like that as well. So the idea was to get a few different pictures of sunflowers and make up our own composition rather than just copying, but bearing in mind um, the composition that Van Gogh used and the colours and the colour theory behind it. Okay, so I'll just pop them to one side. Um, so this is as far as I got with mine, the demonstration. Like I say, I wouldn't normally get this far. I would normally um, just, you know, show them how to do the basic drawing and talk about the colours and the composition and not actually do the, the drawing itself but um, I quite enjoyed doing it and once I'd drawn it I thought oh, I'll carry on and, and finish painting it so I've got still got these flowers to do here and um, quite a bit more on it so I will carry on and do that after this video um, and I'll finish it off for you so I've put that purpley lining to contrast against these oranges and I'll put a list below of the colours that I used to begin with I did this one far too yellow and too bright so I actually went over a wash um, of that with some yellow ochre and some sienna just to make it a bit more muted. Okay so I will carry on with this and finish it and I'll perhaps put some notes underneath to tell you what I've been doing. But I, as you know I work a lot in mixed media which means it's very easy to correct mistakes. So I've, in one or two places where I didn't like the colours quite so much I've popped some um, wax pastel over the top. But I've also used this as a resist in the centre of some of the sunflowers as well. Okay, so I'll just actually move to the desk now and I'll show you a little bit about drawing the flowers in the first place and then I'll carry on and finish and put, pop some more colour onto this. Okay, so just very quickly wanted to talk through how we got the flower shapes to begin with. 
Um, of course you would do it in pencil so you could rub out your guidelines. Um, I'm going to show you now in pen just so that it shows up better for the camera. So you want a variety of shapes um, and sizes in your sunflowers. Think about leaving a space in between them all as well so that you're working on individual flowers. Give each individual flower the same amount of attention. And like I say, leave some space between and have them all in different angles. So if you look at something like this, and again, don't copy the photograph, just take a few shapes and then perhaps invent some of your own as well to go with them. So if you look at one like this where it's slightly facing off to one side, you need to put a few ellipses in. We've got that centre. So when we say ellipse, we mean a circle that's that you're looking at on an angle. So that's the centre and then the outside line here comes somewhere about there and then we've got the petals coming around that. Okay and obviously if this is in pencil you can then rub those out afterwards and then fit the petals into that. So look at how they join there and look at how they curl over. And then at this side they're coming out in this direction and vary them a bit, give some of them a bit of a kink, give them, make some of them go in different directions. Okay, and obviously carry on all the way around. And then you can start and build your detail up with your paint once you start putting your paint on. Don't forget they need some stems as well. Always start your hand here, even if you're not drawing that line there, have your hand here and then go to your stem because that's where it's joined at the back of the flower. Okay, so if you obviously if you're doing one straight on, you might want to just do an ellipse like that and then fit the petals in. Or you might, so now you could get rid of any reference photo and just do them out of your head. Think, well, I need an ellipse here and like that with a stalk coming here, and I'm going to put the flowers petals like this. So you can very quickly just invent a vase of flowers, having them all in different directions. And if they're sideways on, you might not see all of the petals. You might want some of the petals curling in. So just vary them a lot. Okay, so I'll carry on now and continue painting the one that I started earlier. Uh, and I'll perhaps put some music on. And I'll put some little notes underneath about what colours I used. In fact, I'll just get it now and talk about the colours. Okay, so basically I've got in here... Um, that was cadmium yellow mixed with yellow ochre. That was olive green mixed with French ultramarine. That's a Windsor violet mixed with a touch of yellow ochre, I think. That was for this line here. Um, and then I used some uh, cadmium orange and some cadmium yellow and some burnt sienna. So in various mixes. Um, in different strengths and things. Okay, but like I said, I'll list those underneath. And so I'll carry on and finish uh, this painting now. Okay, so thank you for watching it. And any questions, if you want to put, pop them in the comments below.